Hi, I'm Freetime Coder, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how to get the basic PCG graph running. PCG is the new procedural content generation tools from Unreal, and it's currently in preview. And Epic has essentially said they are still experimental and very beta. Uh, so whatever this tutorial is covering, if you are in the future and using a proper release, this might all be wrong. Uh, so be aware of that and. Yeah, here we go. So PCG essentially is just very nice for creating a lot of procedural asset placements. And um, at the heart of it is the PCG graph. And you need to uh, create a new graph asset. Come on. And we'll just call that PCG uh, basic. Because we're going to go over like the most basic functionalities. So you have a input and an output. I don't care about the output right now, but essentially you can nest different graphs and then you can use whatever you output again in a different uh, parent graph. Uh, the input can be split open and there is a variety of different things. So there's at this moment about zero documentation about the system. So it's like all of this. I'm going to show in this tutorial a sort of stuff I've just figured out on my own. Uh, some things are a little bit buggy, some things may be just plain wrongly used, but that's, you know, as far as I got. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to spawn a bunch of points and then use these points and place assets where the points are. If you are familiar with Houdini point clouds, this is essentially a very similar concept. Um, so what we're going to do is we add a new a uh, node that is called a surface sampler and in that surface sampler we plug in the landscape. Uh, essentially what this does is it takes the landscape and just distributes points in a grid pattern uh, and you can configure how how big the spacing between points is and stuff. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we drag this into an empty map. So this is the like starter landscape map from Unreal. Um, and you put this sort of volume down. It's not going to do anything because you need to actually start generating by, if you have it selected, clicking the generate button. And it's still not happening because by default all the points are just data and there's no visual representation. So what we can do is each node has the ability to uh, render debug information. So what we're going to do is hit D on the keyboard and now you can see the debug information display. So these are the points that are generated and they are by default a bit randomized and they also have different densities. Uh, from what I can tell, density is sort of just a float value that each point gets and it's very helpful in sort of randomization, pruning, uh, distribution, stuff like that. Um, I don't think it is anything else but a sort of just preset attribute and you can define your own attributes so I haven't kind of gotten there yet. Um, so yeah, uh, just random points, random density and it is aligned to the landscape. Uh, as you can see here there's another, this is called just landscape height, if you plug that in it will not align to the landscape, it just kind of distributes them on the height. I imagine it's probably faster to do the one and not the other but I don't know, let's just guesswork. So yeah, we're gonna put that do some add some cubes and these cubes are usually contained within the um, procedural volume and if we scale that and let it regenerate then you can see the cubes like the points are generated generate in that volume unless um, I think there was someone yeah you can click unbounded uh, obviously be careful with all procedural generation because if you put values too high it can often happen that it just eats up all the resources of your computer and crashes, so save often. Um, but you can see now everything is covered. Just all available landscape is covered. Uh, so you can see this can get very costly very quickly, so be careful <laughs> of clicking stuff. Um, all right, so yeah, we have some, you can see here there are some cubes missing. That's because it's uh, constrained to the volume. If I move this volume up, uh, now it is missing here. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is a good, great way to make sure that you don't over-generate stuff. 
Okay, uh, enough of that stuff. Um, we have another node. So by default, these are all like uniformly made. Uh, we have another node that I use a lot. It's called point transform or transform points. Uh, what that essentially does, so we'll de disable this debug and enable this debug. What this essentially does is it allows you to randomize or like add additional stuff on the points. So what we can do is like do a different rotation. So if we set the rotation from zero to 360 degrees, you can see all the points now have rotations. Um, you can also, if you want to debug stuff, uh, inspect a node, and that's by hitting I. Oops, sorry, not that. And selecting the graph in the uh, in the scene, then you can see all the points currently in this node and all of the attributes. Um, there are quite a lot. Uh, I haven't like used all of them yet, but you can see them. Okay. Uh, next up, if we want to have something, let's say we want to like this randomization is not enough, so we'll add um, another offset of like, let's say minus 200 and again, minus 200 and then in the opposite direction. And you can see like they are all more randomized now. Um, in most cases, for me at least, I want to have stuff stick to the landscape. So like plants and trees and rocks, they should essentially be on the landscape and even if I do randomize um, I want to kind of re put them down on the landscape so there is a node called landscape project now it's project points on landscape uh, and you drag in your points and you drag in the landscape and then again like disable this debug enable this debug and you can see they are all back on the landscape but what you can also see is they have reset all the rotations because the uh, the node kind of just takes the normal again. So what I usually do is I have one transform for just the offsets and then I duplicate that afterwards and have one just for the rotation. And like, let's say you want to have a bit of yaw and pitch um, rotation as well. So yeah, and we have, have more randomness again. And we can also do some scaling. So imagine this is plants. Uh, obviously, most of the times so you want to have plants with different sizes. So let's just um, make them like between 0 0.7 and 1.3. That's sort of a magic number that I've just, you know, from experience, plants variation in that range is kind of very nice. Uh, but obviously, choose your own values. And then after. Um, having all our plans really neatly aligned uh, we may want to have less so you can see these values between white and black this is the density being debugged and there's a node called density filter which can sort of cut out different ranges so you can say oh i don't want to get rid of all the low density points all the high density points again density is sort of i don't know just some name it's not actually representing how dense the point cloud is at that po point so i'm not sure if there are other generators that utilize this properly uh but at the moment just kind of treat it as a helper value they can use and share between points um so i'm gonna add a density filter and gonna plug that in here and now you can see uh with the density filter selected have a lower bound and an upper bound. If I set it to zero and one, then just all the points pass. If I set it to, let's say, a very high value, then only points that have a density value between 0 0.9 and one pass. And also I can do it obviously the upper, the other way. Um, and you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's a great way to, for example, have different sort of foliage. Uh, so if you place if you use density as a, let's say, mask, so low density would be shrubs and high density would be trees, then you can use a density filter to kind of decide which one to use. Um, another thing you can do is add a density noise. Again, this is sort of just add random values. So you can see I've, I filtered these out 
and then I put a density noise on it and it kind of reapplies uh, all the like just random values to density. So this is a way you can re-randomize a data set. And you can also choose if you want to just override the value or use the minimum, maximum, uh, add it on top or multiply. So um, whatever you need. And you can also say, okay, I want the density to be like a minimum of 0 0.5 or 0 and or even negative values. So you can multiply or add negative values. Um, the last thing and probably like the whole reason why why this is being used is you can use this po these points now to spawn meshes. Uh, for that we use a static mesh spawner and plug the points into the mesh spawner and we also need to actually add entries. So let's so I've got a pack from the marketplace which I really like to use, which has a bunch of cool trees and foliage and stuff. Um, so let us just find a nice tree. Uh, let's say this banana tree looks cool and add that in. And once you've added that, you can see, well, after <laughs> compiling shaders, you can see all our points now have tree instances and based on how big the like how much we added, we changed the scale. You can see the trees are also a different scale. Uh, one thing I'm noticing right now is they still are aligned to the um, to the landscape, which kind of looks a bit funny. So we'll go back to transform points and check absolute rotation. So by default, all of these transforms are relative, so they just add onto the already existing one. But if we check absolute rotation, then it'll com completely override. Uh, the values and then you can see now they are all straight up and if we want to have like a little more variation of them kind of leading to one or other side we can re-add that it's probably a bit too much but and at this point you'll probably just stick up and um, stick with like either values you are comfortable with or just end up experimenting a lot of the time so that's most procedural generation you set up a graph and then end up just experimenting a lot um, you can also, in the static mesh spawner, you can also add multiple points. So if we say we don't, don't wish just, we don't just want bananas, but we want this tree fern as well, uh, we can add that as another entry. And now you can see we have both types of plant, and they just kind of are 50-50. Uh, if you want to have one type more than the other, so let's say we want to have five times as many bananas as we want ferns, you can increase the weight and then you'll have more bananas and ferns. Uh, now I previously said you can use the density for sort of filtering, having different kinds of, of placement, like different kinds of assets. So what we can do is, uh, I'm going to disable, so with the E key, which is the enable key, uh, you can completely disable a node and it'll, like the graph will still try and pass through the data, which is really nice for debugging and figuring out. And actually also, if you are debugging one part of the graph, it's nice because you can just disable the time, the, the stuff that takes too long. Um, okay, so disable all of that. And we have two density filters. Uh, we had this one, which at this point, is uh, doing the lower bound and then we'll add this one and we'll change it to use the upper bound only. So we'll have like uh, maybe just a very top. So we have like these, these few cubes here and we could do something like we'll add another static mesh spawner and plug that in. And let's say we wanna have very large trees. And this one is I think a pretty big one. Uh, and we add that to the mesh entries. And now you have sometimes big trees for like this one data set and sometimes slower trees for the other data set. And that's sort of all the basics there are for um, getting started with PCG. And uh, I'm hoping I'm going to do another one that is a bit more complicated and shows like how you can get external data into the PCG, like other actors, splines, stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's, that's sort of the basics. 
and um, hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.